Hello everybody, it's time for Robotech! Woo! Um, before we get into this episode, uh, I think we should talk about the recent passing of Carl Masek. Carl was the uh, uh, genius behind uh, Robotech primarily and uh, did several other, uh, worked on several other animes as well. Uh, Mars Girl from The Guy with the Glasses covers uh, his uh, biography uh, for anime for pretty well. I, I don't know if there's much more to add, but uh, it's certainly sad to, to hear somebody uh, that was connected to this wonderful show uh, pass on. Yeah. Um, a real important guy to anime. Yes, uh, very much. Even, even if you don't agree with how he edited stuff. You know, he's a pretty controversial figure, but he's an important one. Yes, yes. Uh, now with that out of the way, let's get into episode two countdown, or as I like to call it, the episode where nobody can get their shit to work. <laughs> uh, everything, uh, the episode where everything gets more destroyed than it was before. Yes, um, the enemies attack, Rick can't control his robot, and they just can't get that ship off the ground. Yeah, the, uh, uh, the ship is, you know, uh, it's, got, it's got the uh, anti-grav units in it. And they're like, okay, turn those on, and there they go. The anti-grav units work, um, but they don't bring the ship. They just work by themselves. They're they like, just they're only attached to the ship by, by twist ties or something. I they guess so. Yeah. Who who is responsible for not tying these things thing down better? Uh, they just rip right through the hole, uh, straight in. And you know, they didn't even bother to repair what damage they did. They just like. Yeah, you know, uh, later in the episode, they're like, take off. And they're like, how do you know that will work? We made the engines on Earth. <laughs> That's how we know. <laughs> like, like, why did you do that the first time, though? I mean, yeah, let's I see, don't we could, Let's see, we need to get up there. Let, we could either use the alien technology we've never tested before or the traditional rockets that we know will work. Let's use the alien stuff! <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that was the idea. I mean, global is ordered to do this. He doesn't want it. And again, it's that whole reluctance, like, if that's your order, you know, and the guy's like, yes, that's my order. Is, are you sure? Or, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> you know? So we'll, we'll see a lot more of the government being the bad guys. I mean, that is going to be a recurring motif throughout Robotech, actually. Mm -hmm. And speaking of the government, uh, something I wanted to mention the first time but forgot uh, concerning the character of the senator. Uh, who shows up to give um, the captain his orders. Uh, not much to say, per se, except he's sporting what I like to call the reverse Hitler mustache, where you grow a mustache and then you shave out the Hitler part. <laughs> okay, right, but I, at any rate, we meet Min May kind of, in this episode. Kind of. Not, not, didn't really cover a whole lot. With and her, we uh, meet her... Uh, um, Besides, well, I, I always assumed it was her brother, but I guess I guess it's her younger nephew because yeah, it's uh, her, her aunt's and her, her aunt's uh, son. So uh, I think it's her aunt's son, which would that make would, that'd be a cousin. Cousin. So. Okay, whatever. I don't know how <laughs> family trees work. Uh, <laughs> right. But yeah, we get to meet them, uh, and she seems impressed that Rick uh, learned uh, how to pilot the thing relatively quickly. And time, I don't know how long it took uh, Roy to uh, fix his uh, battleoid, but it seems to go by fairly fairly fast. But it was interesting to see that they were trying to get that thing out of there. Uh, the civilians, you know, they've got their fish trucks, like, trying to lift this giant robot. And everybody seems perfectly like, yeah, this happens every day, even though this is the first time they've ever seen this. <laughs> I know that. It's, it, these people seem really nonchalant about everything that's going on. I mean, aliens are invading, and and particularly Minmay. Uh, uh, when the aliens finally reach Macross City, and they start uh, invading on their little ostrich machines, battle um, battle point battle pods, battle pods. Uh, you know, everyone evacuates and. Min May realizes that her diary is more important than her own life. <laughs> yeah, like, I gotta go I back for my diary. 
the aliens might read it. <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah, sure. Uh, the entire uh, uh, vac we just evacuated the entire city, but you know, um, somebody might read my diary. So yeah, <laughs> what the bleep does she have in her diary? This is what I want to know. <laughs> Top government secrets. Min May's a spy. I don't know. Something important. But at any and rate, her, yeah. aunt, her aunt is just totally not interested. She's, She's like, like no, Asher, go ahead. Yeah. Stop, Be careful. No. Stop. No. Oh, what can I do? Oh, if only I could, like, I don't know, grab you and stop you. Or, you know, move. <laughs> I wish my legs worked. <laughs> um, <laughs> then Rick saving her by uh, holding her in uh, the robot hand. We get to see Guardian mode in this episode. And mm-hmm. uh, to my understanding of how Guardian mode is different from plain and battleoid mode is essentially it's the best of both worlds. Uh, it gives you access to the big giant gun. It gives you access to the plane uh, weapon tree, but it also gives you access to the missiles, which the plane doesn't always seem to have access to. The technology is kind of fuzzy. Even the role-playing game doesn't seem to really know what what to make of the three different forms. <laughs> Uh, but you actually do see the battleoids are actually useful in that they're acting as if they're soldiers. They're hiding behind buildings and kind of like peeking around like uh, soldiers would. So it actually justifies the battleoids, especially once we meet the Zentradi. Uh, the battleoids seem completely justified at that point. Now, I haven't been watching this series in you know 20 years. This is I, I I remember specific scenes. I remember specific uh, emotions concerning the show, but as, I cannot honestly remember a lot of the details about the overarching plot. So I want you to answer this question if you know the answer. Okay. With this, with a very simple yes or no. Okay. Yes. All right. Um. Do they know the ca- the capabilities of the invading alien forces? Before they actually the al- before the aliens actually show up, um, y- yes and no. Uh, there is uh, in the books you uh, get to meet Doctor Lang, who is uh, who actually develops the robot technology, and they actually found records on the ship of the Zentradi, so they knew how big they were. They knew their level of technology was far beyond ours, so they know that there's bad guys. They don't know if they're ever going to show up. They don't really know exactly what they're capable of. So, yes, they're pre-warned. No, they don't really know what to make of it. And Dr. Lang is one of the people that the government, you know, they keep his information away from the military people until far later into the books. But that's a piece of information that's left out. Sure. Um, The reason I asked is there's just two scenes that kind of perplex me. I just wasn't sure how the stakes did. Uh, the first one, which you more or less just answered, was uh, when uh, Rick finally shoots down one of the uh, battle pods, and basically a giant comes out. He's basically a, a 50-foot human. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, uh, God, I can't remember the names. Uh, Roy uh, shoots the giant down, and. Yeah, and Roy's like, yeah, we kept this from everybody else. So, yeah, they knew. Yeah. So they knew. Now, there is a plot hole. It's very minor, but most people have pointed it out, and I think it's worth pointing out. Rick knows Min Mei's name before Min Mei tells him her name. And, in fact, in the next episode, he has to find out her name. So, <laughs> Well, they seem, they seem really attached to each other all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. There, there really was just suddenly, bam, they're the... They're interested in each other. Well, now that's I think that, I think that's Rick competing with his with his brother, quote unquote, Roy. In that Roy's you know the ladies' man, and Rick's trying to follow his footsteps and be the ladies' man. And I think rescue plays a part in that. That he's rescuing here, so he's the hero, and she is the rescuee. So there's that whole uh, relationships do sometimes develop very quickly in those sort of stressful situations. Speaking of rescuing her, I think the absolute highlight of this episode is that one sequence where uh, Rick catches Min Mei oh, yeah. out of the air. And then he almost, just... fly, he almost flies out himself. I always get scared at that point. I'm like, Whoa, wasn't he strapped in? Why aren't you belted in? 
That was just a really energetic, really well animated scene. It just yeah, it really, really is. And out. we re- we revisit that later on uh, in flashbacks and in trauma. And this oh yeah, that would that would definitely be on a highlight reel for the show. Oh yeah, definitely. definitely. And uh, the trauma. I mean, she faints and he uh, shuts down emotionally. So again, uh, this anime is different in that we we see trauma happen. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. I think that pretty much does it for this one. There's really not a lot to it besides the uh, what we just said. The nothing works. Uh, Mid May is suddenly really important, uh, and one really great animated scene. Did so, they ever get her diary? They never got her diary. All this work. Oh no, the they aliens never, have the her alien diary. The alien has her diary. We're screwed. Oh. That's it. They got her secrets. We're dead. <laughs> oh no. <laughs>